Hi, my name is Garrett Parrish and I'm a senior at MIT studying mechanical engineering and entertainment technology. I'm also a musician, designer and engineer and I spend my time combining all three of those disciplines using technology. Um, I usually wake up at around 8 o'clock in the morning, um, start you know, getting ready for the day, have my Trader Joe's uh, raspberry oatmeal every single day. Um, then I usually leave the house about uh, 9.30 or so. I usually don't have class in the morning, so I um, either work on some of my uh, music or my homework or some of the other projects I'm working on, um, grab some lunch in Kendall Square or around campus, um, go to class usually in the afternoon for a couple hours, um, and then at night I usually have rehearsal or um, some other you know, meeting with some of the various activities I do, um, and then come back to the house for dinner, uh, hang out with friends, you know, do my work, and then eventually get back to sleep. You, you mentioned combining music, technology, engineering, sort of broadly speaking. What, mm -hmm. what does that look like? What does that mean? So I try very, very consciously not to pigeonhole myself into one discipline, and I think it's really important for everybody to do that. Um, ever since I was really young, um, I've always done both music and engineering, and that was you know, my path throughout high school and into college, um, because I'm equally passionate about both, and you know, both are absolutely critical to who I, who I am as a human being. Um, and I think that when you can combine them effectively, you can achieve far more than you could with just one of them. So it was really MIT that showed me that that was possible and that I could not have to keep those two parts of my life separate and just do them both at the same time. So what is a, what does your living situation look like? So I live in a co-ed literary fraternity of about 60 students um, called the Number Six Club. We live on campus even though it's privately owned um, and we uh, eat together, socialize together, work together, hang out together, go out together, um, and it's a really, really wonderful community of people. One of the most interesting parts about it is that there's a high constituent of international students, so I'm actually one of only about three or four Americans that live in the house, um, and it's really interesting to be able to be exposed to different cultures from all around the world. We have Greece, Sweden, Germany, uh, Colombia, Venezuela, all over the place. I mean, it's really cool because everyone's kind of an outsider, so it really brings everybody together in like a true family um, of students. Walk me around uh, uh, this room then. Sure. A lot, so, a lot going on here. This is, I, I call this my castle because um, I really like castles and because I'm obsessed with Disney, obviously. That's, that's thematically. Yeah. Um, so, first most and most important part is the ceiling. Um, this is a replica of the night sky. My uh, The girl who had the room before me actually painted it, but then I um, installed all the lights. And one of the great things about number six is that um, they allow you to renovate your room and do what you want with it within reason and even reimburse you for parts of it. Uh, so I put in the floor, I painted, added the lights, and really you know, made it my own space and a place that I you know, feel comfortable coming home to so it's not just a dorm room. So over here, I kind of have my music space. Mm -hmm. So um, this is my electronic drum set, which allows me to play drums at any time of the night and not bother anybody. So this is my desk where I do most of my work. Um, right now I'm working on an arrangement for the jazz ensemble that I play in here. Um, it's debuting in about a month. And behind my desk I have a lot of the drawings I do and I've always been fascinated with the Disney characters and I really um, was interested in getting to know more about visual art and I actually took a drawing class here at MIT which really opened my eyes about um, not being afraid to just you know, dive into something. So um, these are a lot of my first sketches and color drawings of the, diff the characters um, and it's been a really good experience. So, uh, so what's this building here? So this is Kresge Auditorium. Um, it's the main uh, concert and event space on campus. Um, and this is where most of the music uh, concerts and recitals and events happen. Okay. And so, so what, what does the music scene look like at MIT? So there's a common misconception about MIT that it's all engineering and just science numbers. and math and numbers, numbers. all the time. Uh, but that's 
totally not true. Um, there's a very vibrant art scene, there's a very vibrant music scene. Um, I've mainly been involved in the music scene here. Um, there's uh, jazz ensemble, there's choruses, there's orchestras, symphony orchestras, wind ensemble, uh, African drumming groups, um, pretty much anything that you could imagine. Um, and the administration is really, really supportive of students um, that are want to get involved in the arts because you know everybody here is studying some form of engineering or science. So um, the art and music groups, you know, have a really, really nice camaraderie because everyone is doing it purely because they're passionate about it. So what, uh, what do you major in at MIT? So I'm majoring in mechanical engineering um, with a flexible uh, concentration that allows me to focus on something else and that concentration is entertainment technology. Is that a flexible concentration that you built or was that sort of pre-existing? So there are some pre-existing ones like energy, transportation, uh, robotics, but I decided to create my own uh, flexible custom concentration in entertainment. And what, what did that process look like, building that concentration? So it's surprisingly simple. Um, MIT does, ha, does have a lot of support for you know students kind of making their own versions of their majors. Um, and course two, mechanical engineering, uh, has an option that you can submit a proposal with a list of classes um, that are relevant and you, you know, write some essays about why it's important to you, why each class contributes to this. Um, and you submit the proposal and you, know, you talk to your advisor and hopefully you can get approved. Great, great. What do you think makes the MIT engineering departments different or special as compared to other schools from your knowledge? So I think there's been a big push in the past couple decades you know, to increase STEM education and engineering. Uh, the thing about MIT is that they've been doing it long, long before it was ever cool right. to be building things. It's not, not the concern. It's the, right. The cool and the professors here, you know, they're, they're the people that invented the internet, invented all of these technologies that, um, you know, are so ubiquitous to us now. So just the amount of community knowledge is just unfathomable. And you get to learn from these true leaders in every single technological field. Um, so you never have to worry that, you know, you're learning the right thing or you're thinking about things um, correctly because they're just so good at what they do they just like okay this is what you got to know you're gonna be in this situation you're gonna have to think about it this way so you need to learn this and that and etc so it's just really really helpful to be in class and to just be able to just completely pay attention and be like okay I know what I'm supposed to know and then just go do it yeah, yeah. and I think there's a huge focus at MIT on practical learning and I think that that's something that a lot of other schools and a lot of other communities are really trying to ramp up. But the idea of you know learning through doing and MIT's motto is mind in hand. So you both you know study the theory, but then you have really intense lab classes. And MIT really actually gives you tangible skills that you can use to build things, to make things, to design things um, that you know are hard to get sometimes. Do you have a good example of a of a class where you had a cool learning by doing yeah. experience? So uh, the mechanical engineering capstone class is called 2009, and it's the product engineering process. Um, and it's a class truly like no other. Um, so there's eight teams of students. Each gets a budget of about $7,000. And over the course of the uh, semester, the 20 people on your team have to um, come up with a product, design it, build it, and then pitch it by the end of the semester. And so you do every, every stage? Every single stage. You're basically like a little startup. And you go from, you know, blank sheet of paper to being on stage in Kresge, you know, pitching your product to the world. And, it, you know, you have space and lab to do it. You have professors. You have technical instructors to help you, communication instructors. But just the experience of being given the opportunity to be in a leadership position um, in at such a young age and when you're just coming off of all of your rigorous technical education like you actually learn a lot of the other problems that go into making anything because it's not just the equations and everything it's you know how do you deal with people how do you design for a human being how do you you know design something to be manufactured and having the opportunity in a safe you know constructive learning environment to do that when the stakes aren't huge is incredibly valuable Sometimes.
before we <clears throat> let you go and do all the work you got to do, yeah. do you have any parting wisdom for high school students? Any like mantras? Yeah. Um, so I think uh, something that I live by is the idea that it's okay to be in the middle and to not, you know, live in an extreme world and not pigeonhole yourself in one discipline. Um, and it's okay to, you know, both like art and engineering, or both want to do music and do something completely different. Um, and it's okay to have different interests, and it's really important, you know, to show that, um, you know, if you're applying to college or just in life general, generally. Because um, those parts, you know, of you that, you know, you don't always service through your school major or through your research, they're still parts of you. So they need to be celebrated. So if you like this video and want to learn more about colleges, don't forget to subscribe. All right. So if you like this video and you want to learn more. <laughs> 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 no, that's OK. I got my finger on the button.